So today we decided to travel all the way down to Santa Monica Pier in California. I mean, what can you say? It's nice and sunny out today, weather's great, and most importantly, there's a lot of people out and about. So what does that mean? Well, that means that there's going to be a lot of opportunity to share the gospel with people today. All right. Okay, my name is Jerry. Nice meeting you, bro. Maxwell Doc. Cool. Um, okay, I was, I was asking people what their opinions about the coronavirus was. Uh, have you heard about that? Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Um, I don't really have any thoughts. I'm just trying to stay away from it, obviously, if it's killing people and stuff. Um, I mean, I've heard it came from China, but that's all I really know about it. Uh, do you think it's a fearful thing? It's a scary thing? Yeah. Uh, what's the end result of it? Um, I mean, if it's not treated the right way, I think it's obviously death, but I'm not sure about other stuff, about how far treatment goes and stuff like that. Do you think that's the single number one thing that everyone has in common is a fear of death? Mm, no, I think it's fear of losing the people around you, fear of losing your loved ones and stuff like that. Sure, for the people that are, you know, your loved ones, obviously they care about you and if you pass, you know. Ever heard of the coronavirus? Yes. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, I mean, it's kind of scary, but I don't really know. It's it's dangerous. You gotta be like on the just always have your hands washed, clean. Try not to touch a lot of things, especially when you're in public like this. Just gotta keep a distance, I think. So uh, cleanliness is very important then, huh? To prevent it. Yes. I think also people should watch what they eat, like besides like other things, like watch out, like make sure you wash your hands, eat clean food, because like you know it's it's really dangerous. Like you just eat food raw, it's like or anything. Like basically, you can get diseases now with the, the food and the food production and everything. It's like really dangerous. It's definitely uh, bringing a lot of fear with a lot of people. I think that it's a government scheme, honestly. I do think that there, there should be a cure pretty soon, so we should be good. Uh, is it kind of a scary thing for you? Honestly, no, because it's usually it's actually killing all the people with weaker immune systems, so a lot of older people are actually dying to it. But. I mean, it can get anybody, honestly. So, I mean, it could be, it could be scary, but not to me. Think about people that you really love and like how it's spreading across the world. I mean, it's kind of scary. Like, what if that happens to one of you, your family members? If someone is infected, what happens to that person? They're quarantined. They, they become secluded. They can't really travel. They get treated like horribly. It's actually pretty bad. Well, generally, what's the ultimate outcome if you do uh, if you do get the virus. Well, uh, if you're sick, you probably die. So, I mean, not much to do. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, hey, yeah. Because there's no cure right now, right? As of now. It is kind of a fearful thing, right? It's a little bit scary because you, you don't want to contract it and the end results are deadly results, right? Yeah, so I honestly haven't been following up with it too, too much. But I feel like it's like anything, um, just don't sneeze on people. Like if it, right? This is, it spreads by uh, like touching. And I honestly don't know too much about it. Yeah. Um, it's like a, you have to stay six feet away from people and wow. it's spread through, um, through uh, spitting or coughing. Anything uh, with uh, saliva, anything like that, bodily fluids. So, but other than that, from what I've read and heard from CDC, uh, Centers of Disease Control, it's it's uh, it's controllable, but there's a lot of precautions involved with that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is it a little bit scary? Yeah, for sure. Why do a lot of people fear it? Uh. Fear of the unknown, you know, fear that it could just wipe us all out or something. Yeah, fear of death, right? Yeah, fear of death. I think that's the single number one fear that everyone has in common, would you think? Yeah. So, um, 
Well, do you have any ideas of an afterlife yourself? Ooh, actually, uh, I'd, I'd rather not say anything on the subject. Do you, do you believe in the afterlife, bro? Um, I haven't really gave much thought of it. Okay, uh, do you think it's possible? Yeah. What have you heard the possibilities were? Mm, nothing really that you come back as someone else, something else, that's about it. And then there's also a belief of uh, heaven and hell, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's suppose heaven and hell existed. How does a person go to heaven? Being good, being doing good in your life, being not doing bad stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. If it, if heaven and hell existed, if heaven existed, um, do you think you you'd be good enough to go there? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what the standard are for that. So I'd have to put more thought into that. Have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Can you name a few? No. Uh, thou shalt not lie. Yeah. Have you ever lied in your life? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, have you ever stolen anything in your life? Yeah. Um, downloaded anything you shouldn't be downloading? In the past, even. Okay, that's good. Have you said uh, OMG or anything like that? Like, any, like, acronyms. Yeah, like, uh, taking the Lord God's name in vain. You heard of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no. I mean, yeah, all right. I don't really put much thought in the religion, so like, yeah, I really, I really throw that around just like casually. Uh, that's fair. Most most people don't, you know. To be honest, most people don't. Um, um, let's say, would you ever take your mom's name? I don't know your relationships, by the way. I don't know you, but just for argument's sake, would you ever take anyone who you love and use their name as a curse word? No. It doesn't make sense, right? No. Okay, so that's the same sense. If there's a God that loves us and we love Him uh, and we take His name in vain, that's it doesn't make sense, you know? Okay, so one, one or two to go, okay? Um, have you ever hated anyone in your life? Yeah. Okay. And Jesus said if you've ever hated anyone, it's like murder according to God's standards. Not ours, but according to God's, if that was the case. Uh, have you ever looked with lust? Yeah. Have you ever had sex out of marriage? Yeah. Okay. So, do you think cheating is a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Okay. And the old word, old-fashioned word, word in the Bible about with cheating is uh, uh, adultery. Jesus said, whoever looks with lust, like looking, porn, you know, lust has committed adultery with that person in their heart. So, that's, again, the standard, like hating, murder, lust adultery and uh, fornication too okay okay if God this is a big if now okay if God were true and we died and he were to judge us where would that land us if we've broken his loss pretty much if we die yeah well, everyone's gonna die eventually but judgment day you know if I have zero friend much thought into afterlife or anything after we die, so I, really, I have no into that. Any clue what that word says on your shirt? Um, damn? Yeah. What does it say? What do you mean, what does it say? That's a short word for damnation. You know what damnation means? No. It means that you're you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> you know, you're, you're screwed, like you're going to hell. That's what it means. Uh, and hell's not a pretty place, you know. Some people make light of it, but it's really not a place that even your worst enemies you'd want them to go to. Okay? Jesus said, if you even um, if your eye causes you to sin, it's better to pluck it out than to have both of your eyes, and it'll take you to hell. You know, he's he's speaking uh, in you know he's just saying things to show you. Uh, how how bad it is to go to hell, you know? Uh, would you, if there is, you know, if there is a God and 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 we're damned for hell, you know, how would would that concern you? Yeah, yeah, I would. 
believe me, I'm concerned for you. I'm concerned for everyone, and that's why we're doing this interview. You know, um, now just like the coronavirus, okay. I came to you today because I believe that you do have a disease, and that disease is sin, and that's what's going to cause us to to be、uh, facing God at Judgment Day, where He's going to send us to hell. Because、uh, it says that sin is like we've earned it. It's the wages of sin is death. But there's a but, there's a contrast. But the gift of God is eternal life. So sin is something we've earned, according to what the Bible says. Maybe you haven't had that upbringing, like you mentioned, but I want to share that with you because I know that there's, you know, once you realize that you have a disease, then of course it would make sense to get the cure, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's the cure. Jesus died for you and me on the cross. You know Jesus. You've heard of him, right? It's like you and I. We broke God's laws, the Ten Commandments. You're no better than me, and I'm no better than you or anyone else. You know, we're all sinners, according to the Bible. Actually, it's just we need to recognize it first, or else we won't know what the cure is. Okay, so we've broken God's laws, and Jesus paid the fine. See, a judge, if we broke the laws here in Santa Monica, <laughs> I don't know if you've broken laws. I don't know your life story, okay? But if we broke the law, can a judge just? And when we go to court for it, can the judge just let us go if we say sorry? No. No. Someone has to pay, right? And if someone, if you can't pay for it, what happens?、Uh, you go to jail. That means, yeah. Right. So saying sorry is not enough. Someone still has to pay. If the judge just lets you go, then he's not a good judge. You know? Can you imagine a judge that just lets、uh, th thieves and murderers and rapists free because they're sorry? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. The judge should be put on trial himself, right? Yeah, and, and of course, there's bad judges in this world, right? But a judge, a good judge, can let you go off the hook legally if someone loves you enough that they're willing to pay for your bail. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a father or a friend or someone who loves you and says, "The judge, judge, here's the money. I'm paying for his crime because I love that. I love him."、Uh, and so the judge can accept the bail money and say. Young man, you're free to go. Not because you've earned freedom, but because someone paid for your crime for you. The same way Jesus Christ paid for our crimes against God Himself. God, through Jesus, was reconciling the world back to Himself, so that we can be forgiven. Because someone still has to pay, so instead He paid for it Himself. Does that make sense? He loved us that much that He paid for it Himself. That's an amazing grace. It's not by what we can do to be good people. But because of what God did for us, that's an that's an amazing love story, if you ask me. And so your shirt there, you'd be damned if you died in your sins, bro. But God offers you eternal life because of what He did. You know how to receive that eternal gift, that free gift that God gave. The Bible says to repent and trust in the Savior. What do you think repent means? I don't right now. It's like when you broke your relationship with someone, and you come back, and you really want to change your ways. You have a change of heart, and you apologize, and you make. Yeah, kind of same. Okay. And it's like you promise that person, "I'll never do that again," and you mean it. It's not like you're just saying it because you you want to make things right. Of course, you want to make things right, but. If I poked your eyeball, <laughs> okay. If I poked at your eye and said I'm really sorry, but I keep poking at it, does that mean that I was really sorry? No.、Uh, repentance is to to be sorry and also forsake it or turn from it. Okay, that's difficult to do, but with God, all things are possible. You know, if God's working in your life, He'll give you a new heart, and He'll make you love the things that. God loves and hate the things that you you used to love, the sins that you used to love. You'll start hating it, and you'll see God working in your life that way. But the other thing is, you have to put your trust in the Savior.、Um, like this, if you had to jump off of an aircraft that's gonna crash eventually, there's a parachute underneath your seat. I mean, what's the best thing you should do?、Uh, use the parachute. Use. Use the parachute. Put it on, right? You don't just believe that it's gonna save you. You actually put it on. So that's a real belief. That's a real trust. That's a real faith, right? You don't live life as a hypocrite. That's the whole point. Because eventually, 
like our life is like that plane it's gonna crash or if we have a disease the coronavirus we're gonna die and we're gonna face God but that what the one thing that will save us is we we put our trust in Jesus Christ the Savior the parachute that's what the Bible says put the Lord Jesus Christ on like a parachute can I pray for you cool thank you bro God bless you guys thanks for the conversation thank you for giving us that wisdom thank you for giving us that